Hey, what's going on, Shrimp Keepers? It is Saturday, uh, which means a Shrimp Saturday. And uh, I'm at the warehouse right now. We had a uh, big meeting here, uh, the Youngstown uh, Tropical Fish Society. Youngstown Area Tropical Fish Society. I'm one of the board members. And so we have our board meetings here at the warehouse. And uh, so we went over that. But anyway, I made a pretty big mistake today. Uh, a little bit of an oopsie. I killed some of my shrimp. And, uh, and I've really, I don't think I've ever done this before. Uh, this was the first time. And, uh, and it sucks, but hopefully I don't lose too many shrimp over it. Um, I lost some really nice ones, so I'm kind of kicking myself. So that's what I'm gonna make my shrimp Saturday about. I'm gonna teach you guys something and uh, hopefully show you something that you guys don't know. So <sighs> let's get into it. But hey, check this out. So uh, I did No Shave November and uh, it's kind of going into December. So I'm gonna go till the end of December and see, uh, see how big I can get the beard going. And uh, it's gonna be fun, but completely off topic, sorry. Uh, let me go show you guys what's going on. All right, so we're back in the shrimp room. And uh, if you guys remember correctly, the two, uh, or the 420 longs on the top, I was actually acclimating shrimp to those ones. And so, uh, so that's basically where this mistake happened. So I, I, drip, I was drip acclimating them down to the floor, and then, and then I actually just put them in. But before I did all that, um, I, had, uh, I had my intern, kind of reset all the tanks, like drain them down, put new water in. And uh, for you guys that don't know, I do use RO water in all my tanks. I'm gonna get into that. But basically what happened, this thing's so cool, this one right up front. Um, basically what happened was uh, I had Jeff, which is my intern, uh, break the tanks down pretty much, uh, drain them halfway, fill them back up with RO water. And I forgot to uh, remineralize the tanks. And so the, the shrimp were drip acclimated to uh, 70 TDS water, which is really, really low for them. And uh, they're used to 200. And so, uh, so I came in today and the buckets were, uh, were a little low. I, I let them drip acclimate for like three days. And so that was a good thing. But um, the, buckets, not, the buckets were low TDS and there was a couple dead ones. And I'm like, you know, I never lose shrimp when acclimating them as far as my own shrimp go from Sorry, the focus sucks. But uh, as long as, as far as the shrimp go from my own tank. So like, if I move shrimp from one tank to another tank, um, I never am worried about them, uh, them dying. And so to have dead ones on my own shrimp was pretty surprising to me. And I didn't realize it until after I added this tank and this tank, the shrimp into them. And then I checked their TDS and the TDS of the tank was like 78. And this one was like 74, and I'm just like, oh no. So I actually had to remineralize the water inside of the tank, uh, which is never a good thing. And so I'm really nervous to see how these guys do in the next month or two, I, or in the next month, because the first month is always the red zone. So what I want to get into today is uh, remineralizing water, why I use RO water, what I use to remineralize it, and how I do it. Um, I feel like it's a really important thing for you guys to know, and, uh, and just kind of get into those details. So. My big boo-boo was I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna lose a lot, not a lot, but hopefully not a lot, but I'm definitely gonna lose some shrimp. And uh, these guys are so pretty, like, I wish I could zoom in on some of the shrimp in here, but it will, this camera will not let me. Like this one right up front, like, it's so pretty. And these are like crystal blacks, but they're mixed in with tigers. And these ones are all just a mixed Michelin tank. Uh, these ones are, uh, red Michelin's and then these ones are black Michelin. So anyway, let me turn on the light and I'll kind of show you guys what I use to mineralize and why I do it. So first of all, why do I use um, RO water? And it comes down to a lot of things, but the first thing is, let me, let me try to do this real quick. I figured out that if I turn these, these lights up really high, then the shimmering goes away. So that's what I'm gonna start doing for these videos. Um, but anyway, so I realized that, I don't even remember what I was talking about, but let's, let's get back on topic. Uh, why I use RO water. So RO water and RODI, RO, it's all the same, distilled water. Um, basically it means it's zero TDS, which means there's nothing in it. There's no dissolved solids in the water, just straight water. Uh, it's really, I don't even think it would be good for you to drink. Uh, just because there's nothing in it, it's just pure liquid. And uh, so the reason that I use that in the tank is because I have so many shrimp um, that, you know, your water plant 
every water is different and you really know what you, you never know what you're going to get as far as water goes. And so uh, you don't know if they're adding chlorine in it, chloramine, um, you know, there could be a ton of stuff in there. There could be a bacterial infection that isn't harmful to people, but it is the shrimp. And so a lot of things can go wrong. And so for me, it's not worth the risk. So it's always simpler just to start off with uh, RODI water, distilled water, something that has nothing in it, and then add the minerals back into it. Um, that, I mean, that's what I like to do just because it's like peace of mind. And so if you guys have the money or the opportunity to do that, um, I would highly recommend it for that reason. Um, so what I use to remineralize, let me show you this. So I use, and granted, I apologize for this mess because it is a disaster, but I use salty shrimp exclusively in the powdered form. And I use GH plus and I use KH plus. Um, the difference between the two really quick is this one, which is the GH plus, is for uh, Taiwan bees, crystal reds, although I use, I use this for crystal reds, but it, it, that's what it could be for. So this one is for buffer tanks. If you want a pH below seven, use this one. If you want a pH uh, right at seven or above, use this one. And the reason why is KH, real quick, I'll give you a quick lesson. KH is carbonate hardness. It is what dictates the stability of your pH. So the more KH you have, the more stable your pH is. So like if you have a KH of 12 and you're trying to buffer your tank, uh, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna eat up your buffered substrate really quick. Um, if you have a KH of zero, it's really easy to, uh, to get you know, a low pH or stabilize your pH at like five or six or whatever you want it to be. And so that's the difference between the two. Um, I prefer this one over this one. So the, the KH is good for what I'm using. This I use on this whole rack. And so uh, so that's some of the, the crystals are getting moved to that, although I never kept them like that. Uh, the Taiwan bees and stuff prefer this. And so what you do is you mix it into um, RO water. You just add it in. And so I got a kind of a system now. So first of all, the reason I use powdered is because you know that it's always going to be the same no matter what. If you use a liquid, sometimes it may not get mixed well, sometimes you might not shake it up. It's always gonna be different. Um, you're not getting the bang for your buck. So to do this, you need two things. This is the TDS pen that I use. TDS Easy, um, HM, let me see, digital. You can get them on eBay, you can get them on Amazon. Uh, they're, they're under $20, I know that for a fact. So they're pretty cheap, they're extremely accurate. I've never had a problem with one. So first, get a TDS pen. You're going to want to add this water or this uh, powder to a jug of distilled water. And so basically what you do is you use this pen first, test the distilled water by sticking this. There's a little node down in here. You just stick this uh, this far into the water. So boom. And then you're going to measure the TDS. I actually here. I'll show you in one of the tanks. So right now it reads zero. You stick it in the tank. It reads 248. And so the significance of that when working with RO water, you want to check to make sure your RO water is zero or at least under 10. Uh, if it's under 10, you know, it's not terrible. You want it as close to zero as possible. So mine comes out at like three, which is, you know, it's fine. So you get your distilled water, you slowly add this to it. And if you're going to use the salty shrimp, if you're going to use any one of these products, I got a system down. So TDS stands for total dissolved solids. This powder, is the same every single time. This powder is the same every single time. If you want to remineralize for uh, Taiwan bees and stuff like that, 130. Add this to RO water. When you get 130 on your TDS pen, it's perfect every single time. Um, and that's the that's the system for that. If you're going to use this and you want to and you're measuring the TDS using distilled water, you want to get a TDS of uh, 200 to 250 in my opinion. Uh, you can go 160, 180, you know, you can. Uh, I like 200 to 250, gives them a little extra minerals, makes it easy to molt, uh, all that good stuff. So uh, that's what I do. Um, if you didn't want to do it, the other way you could do it is you could do distilled water um, or RO water and mix it in with your already, um, you know, your well water. Like, let's say your well water is a TDS of 300, right? Oh, I don't know if this is going to focus because there's not enough light. But anyway, if your well water is a TDS of, actually, let me just uh, let me just turn around and I'll actually talk to you guys face to face. 
because I can't focus in with this camera anyway. But hold on one second. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, so if um, if you're gonna remineralize with uh, well water and you don't want to do the salty shrimp, you don't want to do the GH and cage. Uh, what I would do is I would measure your water. So find out where your TDS is. Say it's 300. Uh, you measure your GH, your cage if you want to. You don't even have to. Um, if you had distilled water in with or RO water in with your already well water, um, you can uh, lower your TDS and get it to um, you know about 200. And nine times out of ten, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you want to be crazy and, and measure a lot, like if you only have one or two tanks, measure, measure, measure. Um, I have too many, so I don't measure. Um, but I would get it to where you have a GH of like six to eight and a KH of like two to three for uh, neocaridina. Um, if you're going for, um, you know, if you're going for the, the harder to keep shrimp, like the Taiwan bees, uh, you want to get a GH of like, I don't know, four to five and a KH of zero. So you're probably going to have to use the RO water for them. But other way, you can just mix distilled water, mix RO water, you know, no big deal. And so my tip for you guys is like, RO water is foolproof. Like, you're never gonna have bacteria in the water. You're never gonna have things that, that are gonna wipe out a colony. So if you wanna really get into this hobby, if you really wanna have success uh, in this hobby, use RO water, DI. You can buy a unit online. Uh, they're pretty expensive to be honest, but I mean, if you wanna get serious about this hobby, you need one. Um, and use it and remineralize and salty shrimp is the best out there. I mean you can get uh, blue wizard You can get a couple of the other ones. I think it's blue wizard um, I know shrimp king offers some and shrimp king and salty shrimp are the same exact thing so whichever one you have the ability to get and Whichever is the best price you can get it um, But I've heard from my distributors. It's pretty much the exact same thing So uh, if, if you know get one if you can whichever one's cheaper anyway I get two, I swear to God, I get two scatterbrained and I go a thousand different directions, so I apologize for that. But the end of the story, the moral of the story, is you need to follow your parameters. Never forget to remineralize water and drip acclimate your shrimp, because that is bad. And I did that, and that's not good. And hopefully, I don't kill a lot of shrimp, but I will let you guys know that. Um, I'll let you know how it goes. But anyway. Use RO water, in my opinion. Remineralize it. Use TDS. You don't have to measure the GH, the cage. Uh, it's going to be pretty consistent every time. So, TDS is an important measurement. Um, this is also good. I'm going to give you a little, a little piece of advice if you hung on till the end. Um, if you set up a tank at 200 TDS, right, um, and then over the course of uh, the next month, if if you're not doing top off, water's going to evaporate, and your TDS is going to go up, right? Oh, sweet. I got a royal blue baby in this tank that I just saw, so that's pretty cool. Sorry, I'm getting back on track. Where was I? Um, anyway, evaporation. Add pure R water. Uh, the minerals don't evaporate, so whenever topping off a tank, always use uh, zero TDS. If you're doing that and you're paying attention to the evaporation level, correct? Um, then you start seeing TDS goes up. That means your nitrates, your ammonia, different things like that, other elements are raising in the tank. And so if you get a TDS of 220 and you're doing all your top offs, you know you're probably getting close to doing a water change because that way you know that there's something in the water because TDS is total dissolved solid. So you can really stay on top of your water changes by measuring TDS. If your TDS is if in your tank with top offs is always at the, the level that you keep it at, you really don't need a water change in my opinion. I mean, this is the method that I use and, uh, and it's worked out okay. You know, I'm still here and I still got some tanks. But uh, anyway, here, I'm just gonna show you the thing because this thing's sweet. I don't think it'll show up. Yeah, it is showing up, maybe. I don't know. I can't tell. Whatever, if you saw it, I'm pretty pumped about it though because I didn't think there was any babies left in that tank. I didn't think there was any shrimp left in that tank, so I'm gonna leave that tank up and hope there's a ton more babies in there. But uh, anyway, I've rambled for way too long, I'm sure. I don't know how long the video is, but I'm sure it's, uh, it's getting up there. So you guys, don't make the mistakes that I made. Hopefully you can learn from this video. Um, hopefully you take something out of this. But uh, I appreciate your guys' love. Happy Shrimp Saturday. Uh, get out there, do something fun. You guys make it a great weekend. And, uh, and I'll talk with you guys soon. Have a good one.